Are you planning a basement or basement conversion and need some basement ideas? Well in this video we're going to share with you no less than 35 different rooms, spaces and ideas that you can use your basement for. After you go through this video your brain will be exploding with basement ideas. So for the starters how about this for one? An aquarium. At the last Grand Designs live show in London, George Clark, the guy from the home show and Amazing Spaces on TV, told me a very interesting story. He told me that he had to visit a man's house in Nottingham as part of his show Amazing Spaces, and to his surprise the guy had a pond in his living room. Except it turned out it wasn't the pond, but was in fact the entrance to a massive story sized aquarium he had built in his basement. And in this aquarium he had stingrays, turtles, catfish and a four foot alligator garfish. Here's what one of those looked like. Now not many people know this but George is a bit claustrophobic and he had to get into his wetsuit and get into this thing. Let me repeat, this is some bloke's basement. And once he was down there the turtles proceeded to take a fancy to George's toes and there wasn't much he could do except push his face up into a six inch gap between the water and the underside of the living room floor pleading to get out. Needless to say he wasn't happy. But the real interesting part of the story is that the guy who owned the house had built all this himself. All the demolition, all the structure and the aquarium itself, everything. Now I'm not sure I would be too happy about someone building something like that beside my house as I'm sure you wouldn't be too keen on it either. But the fact is the guy knew exactly what he wanted to use his basement for and it formed the basis of how he built it. And you need to have this crystal clear clarity too when it comes to your basement. So to help you with that we're going to share with you no less than 35 different rooms, spaces and ideas that you can use your basement for. Ok let's go down to the basement and get started. First up are some living spaces. Living spaces are the rooms in your basement that support you and your family and how you use your home and not just rooms to gather and hang out in. Here are a few ideas for some living spaces. Number one is a family room. The family room is a room where your family can gather together and relax. The number one factor for this kind of room is comfort and the space should be inviting and a natural place for the family to get together in the evening. Here's a shot from Deco Bliss outlining some tips for a great basement living room. Number two is a pantry. A cool dry basement is an ideal place to store food. Here's a cool DIY pantry rack from the wood grain cottage. Next is wine storage. A cool dry basement is also an ideal place to store wine. Basements without heating generally stay at around 12 or 13 degrees centigrade which is ideal for storing wine. Humidity should be kept between 50 and 70 percent and the room kept dark. The middle of the basement is an ideal place for this kind of space. The guys at Sebring Design Build have this down to a fine art so check this one out. Number four is a kitchen. This might come across as odd but I have seen several basements that had seriously equipped kitchens in them and they worked really well for the house as a whole. There are issues with fire protection, smoke extraction and multiple means of escape for the basement but these are all easily dealt with. If you want a self contained flat then you will need a kitchen and where else to put it than the basement. The good folks at Roundhouse designed the one you see here and just look how much light is getting in there. Number five is a laundry room. The middle of a basement tends to be quite dark unless you specifically design for getting natural light into the space. This lack of light makes the middle of a basement an ideal spot to locate rooms that provide a specific function but aren't a place to hang out in. A laundry room is an ideal example of this. Here's a rather beautiful one from Refurb. Number six is a utility room. A utility room is more of a multi-purpose room than a laundry room. For example you could store kitchen equipment here to save you cluttering up your kitchen above. It could be a cleaning storage room with a dishwasher. It could be a partial pantry and wine storage or a boot room or a mixture of all the above. It's really up to you. Here's a nice one from Jane Lockhart. Number seven is storage. A trick to use here is to keep the ceiling of the storage room unplastered so you can use the floor joists to hang extra storage cabinets for various bits and bobs. Here's a very good and tidy one from Case Design Remodeling Indie. Number eight is a toilet. Toilets can be located in the middle of a basement too as they can function quite well without natural lighting. However with basement toilets you will need a pump and macerator. Here's a good one from Thetford. Number 9 is a luxury bathroom. A basement is an ideal place for a luxury bathroom. A good place to have one is right under the front entrance to the ground floor. As you could put a glass block floor which will get light into the space without compromising your privacy. 
and you can of course furnish the bathroom any way you see fit. You can also have a jacuzzi or large tub in this space. Basements are ideal places to locate large heavy tubs as they can be comfortably supported on the concrete basement slabs. The number one reason for a luxury bathroom in a basement is of course privacy and is very much a space to escape from the world or from your kids. Here's a beautiful one from Classic Fire Services. Number 10 is a self-contained flat. A self-contained flat is essentially combining a kitchen, a luxury bathroom with a bedroom. The bedroom can be located to the front of the house which is also where we have our luxury bathroom. The kitchen can be placed in the middle of the basement but we do need to factor in ways to get natural light into the space which is very doable. Here's a nicely decorated basement flat. Number 11 is a guest room. If you don't fancy a self-contained flat then we can omit the kitchen and keep the luxury bathroom and bedroom and use these spaces for guests. It's a great place to give them privacy. You can also combine a guest room with other types of rooms to make it multi-purpose. Here's one from Carrie Bernstein Architects that combines a guest room with a playroom. Number 12 is a bedroom. You can fit several bedrooms into a basement and because room layouts can be very flexible in the basement we can get very creative with how we lay them out. Ideally the bedroom should have windows which places them at either end of the basement but if that is impossible the room can be still livened up with bright colours and spot and overhead lighting. Here's a good example of mood lighting in this bedroom from Madison Taylor Design. Number 13 is an in-law suite. Here you can create an in-law suite to take care of an elderly family member or a member of the family that has a disability whilst also affording them some independence too. This is a spin on the self-contained flat but with a greater focus on mobility and usability for the person using the room. Factor into the design things like wider doors, plenty of natural light to get into the space and a separate entrance than to the rest of the house. Another important point is access to the suite itself which must be factored into design if they have mobility issues. Here's a good example of such a suite from architect Candace Olsen. Number 14 is a rehabilitation room. You could also have a purpose built rehabilitation room for use by a recently disabled family member. Again planning access, door widths and mobility in this type of space are important. Ok the next category of rooms are the work rooms and whilst this list could have been extended forever I've highlighted some of the more common basement workspaces that I have come across. Here are a few basement ideas for work rooms. Number 15 is a home office or study. A home office could pretty much fit anywhere in the house but they make a really cool addition if you build your basement to extend under your rear garden. With this scenario you can create a link to the outside world with your office or study which makes it an inspiring place to work. The goal for any home office or study is to create an efficient work area where everything that is needed is within touching distance. Here's an amazing one where the office is hidden behind a fold down wall from EL Studio. The wall is down in this photo and the wall is up here to reveal the office. Number 16 is library. While it's not strictly a workroom, I personally use my library as a work tool and dedicate one hour every day to studying various topics so I am including it here. Books are very heavy when lumped together so a basement is an ideal place for a library as the concrete floors can take heavier loads than timber floors. Here's a beautiful one with a central staircase. Number 17 is an art studio. You can make your basement as open plan as you want so you can have a nice open space to use it as an art studio. If you extend your basement underneath your rear garden you can create a beautiful space with a link to the outside as we discussed earlier. An art studio requires plenty of storage for supplies as well as good ventilation and lighting. Here's an amazing studio by artist Ashley Hackshaw. Number 18 a Photography Studio. If you're still using the dark room for developing photographs then the middle of the basement is ideal for that. You'll also need to use sealed doors to prevent light entering although this is less of an issue the nearer the middle of the basement you are. Other requirements are a ventilation system to remove chemical fumes, a sink, plenty of storage and a low intensity red light so you can see what you're doing without ruining the photographic paper. However as most photography is digital these days the setup you see here will probably suffice. This studio is by Dave Dugdale. Number 19 is recording studio rehearsal room. The middle of the basement is a perfect area for a recording studio as you can soundproof that portion of the basement most effectively. It could also double up as a rehearsal room too. Material finishes are something to consider here as you don't want too hard or soft surfaces to either bounce around or absorb the sound. A good rule of thumb is if the floor is soft like a carpet finish then the ceiling should be hard such as the plaster finish. Glass surfaces are a no go in a music room. 
The company Basement Remodeling have done loads of them, and here's a cool one they did. Number 20 is a dance studio. Again, because basements can be as open plan as you want, you can create an ideal open plan dance studio. Here's a great one from Basement Dance Studio. Number 21 is a candle making room. I included this one because I designed a basement a few years ago that had a candle making room and it had candle wicks all over the place. Storage is important for this type of room as is ventilation. Here is one from Pen and Beach Candle Company. Now we're on to the hobby spaces and these rooms are for our personal interests such as workshops or craft spaces. Here are a few basement ideas for hobby spaces. Number 22 is a woodwork room. For the woodworking enthusiast, this would be ideally located to the rear of the house, although access for material and equipment deliveries would need to be considered. Adequate storage is a must and can be provided by plenty of shelving. A neat trick is to have a workbench that can be folded up or moved under a countertop when it's not in use. Here's a great picture from Matthias Wandel. Number 23, remote control car room, or any kind of man cave. Again, you can create a really cool remote control car room. In fact, you could make it any kind of man cave, but seeing as we are here talking about remote control cars, here's a great one from the RC Element. Number 24 is a beer making room. And how could we forget the creation of the Nectar of the Gods? Here's a great one from Cal of the Electric Brewery. Number 25 is a sewing or quilting room. A sewing room needs a bit more space than a knitting room, so you can spread out the quilts or clothes. You also need more storage too for all the supplies. Good lighting and a nice relaxing place to sit should be factored into design. A laminate timber flooring makes a sensible choice as it's easy to spot and pick up needles that get dropped onto it. Here's a homemade one from Tasha from By Gum By Golly. Next up are recreational rooms and these are great spaces just to hang out and enjoy yourself with games, toys and whatever floats your boat. With a bit of thought you can design some really cool spaces to spend time in and here are a few basement ideas for recreational rooms. Number 26 is a home bar. I once worked on a job where the client had a traditional English style pub built in the rear of his basement and it was linked outside to a retro barbecue area he had constructed on top of the basement roof slab. Now that is the life. Here's a great one from Decoration Channel. Number 27 is a home cinema or entertainment system. One of the more common rooms found in larger basements is the movie room. You can fit a fully equipped screen and surround sound system and if you're worried about the noise you can soundproof the room too. These can be placed towards the middle of the basement as natural light isn't such an issue with these types of rooms. Here's one from Grig Staymate. Number 28 Games Room Snooker or pool tables, ping pong tables, arcade machines, games consoles, darts etc. They all work quite well in these types of rooms. The scope for this type of room is ridiculous and it can be placed pretty much anywhere in the basement that you like. But a room like this does require a good bit of space. One thing though is to provide comfortable seating next to games tables as some games do involve standing for prolonged periods of time such as snooker and pool. For adult game rooms these do tend to go well when mixed with a bar and music room. And for teenagers, you can remove the bar. Here's a retro one from Diggs Diggs. Number 29, a children's playroom. If you've got young kids, you can build them a nicely designed playroom with lots of nooks and crannies for them to discover. A room like this needs plenty of storage and safety is a design consideration. Placing the kids room near the home office or family room will allow you to supervise them to make sure they're okay. If this isn't possible, then you can get a home monitor or intercom to keep in contact with them as they play. Here's one from our friend Greg Staymate. Number 30 is a gym room. Gym equipment lends itself to sitting on concrete floors. However, a gym room does usually need to be towards the front of the house to get the equipment in, as some of it, like treadmills and the like, can be very big and heavy. My advice with these types of rooms is to get the equipment in early whilst there is room to do it. Don't wait until the basement is finished, as you'll have a nightmare getting all the gear into the place. If you do it early, you can also have the gym room at the back of the house. You will need good airflow, but that can be done mechanically as well. In both situations, make sure that the entrance door that lead to the gym room are wider than normal to get the gear through. Here's a great one from Brandon Architects Incorporated. Number 31 is a spa, sauna or steam room. Spas can be a wonderful place to relax in, but make sure they are separated from the rest of the spaces in the basement, so the daily traffic doesn't disturb your quiet time. Steam rooms are generally the same size as a bathroom and utilise humid heat rather than the dry heat of a sauna. Steam rooms have all sorts of health benefits and you can even use essential oils with the steam delivery system. So you can use this room for aromatherapy too. 
Here's one from Elite Stone and features a heated pool, jacuzzi, gym, sauna and a steam room. Number 32 is a swimming pool. Swimming pools tend to be built with double height basements as the size of a pool would take out a large area of the basement. However, you can just as easily build them in a single storey basement if you are okay with having less room to use for other spaces. But don't underestimate what it takes to construct one of these. They are notoriously difficult to construct and here is a shot from Will Bergen from Carecraft which outlines just that. Number 33 is a yoga room or meditation room. You can also create a chilled yoga room. You can even create a Bikram yoga room if you wish. Fully equipped with the relevant heating systems to get things warmed up. You will require ventilation for that kind of room, so either the front or rear room of the basement is best. Alternatively, you can create a chilled out meditation room, fully equipped with an audio system to play some meditation music or trances to get you in the right state. Here's a very chilled one from Sharon Taftian. And last but not least we come to animal spaces for our dear pets. I've seen dog rooms, cat rooms and aviaries over the years. I've even seen a squirrel room, I'm not kidding, and it was the fattest squirrel I've ever seen. It was like a sumo squirrel. Here are some basement ideas for animal spaces. Number 34 is a pet room. These spaces do work well when there is good access to outdoors, so the obvious place is to the rear of the basement, especially if you build out underneath your back garden. The one here isn't the most glamorous, but yes, that is a doghouse underneath the stairs. And last but not least, we're back to our aquarium. Remember the aquarium I mentioned at the start of this video? Well, the reason it works is because the heavy loads from an aquarium do suit basement floors. And here is that very aquarium that was built in a basement in Nottingham. So there you have the 35 basement ideas for your home. Now as you may appreciate a lot of these rooms can be put in several categories and not just that a lot of them can be mixed and matched or you could design a room to perform double duty by having two or more functionalities built in. So when you think about it the list suddenly becomes exponential and I have left quite a lot of rooms out too. The only limit is your imagination. Thanks for checking out our basement ideas video. For a lot more info like this please visit bespokehomedesign.com or click on some of the links provided below. Also, do you want to know how much your basement will cost? The most common question we get from our clients is how do I get a ballpark figure for my building work so I have an idea on how much my basement will cost before I start? And there hasn't really been an easy answer to that until now. Well, if the question applies to you, then you need to check out our Ultimate Basement and Basement Conversion Costing Toolkit. Basically, we've tried every pricing tool, both offline and online, and we've put together this toolkit, which shows you how to use what we consider the best free online costing tools that exist for the UK market. We break it down and give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to use it, and you'll be shocked at how ridiculously easy it is to use it. We'll also show you what info you need to fill them out, and how to get this info if you don't have it. Again, it's really simple to do. This is the best resource on the big bad interwebs for getting a pretty good ballpark figure for your basement, be it a conversion of one you already have or a brand new basement. And the best part is, you can do it all online, there's no conning anyone or booking an appointment or being hounded by salespeople. In summary, you'll discover the free and super simple online pricing tool meant for basement and basement conversion projects. You'll get an accurate cost for your potential basement in 5 minutes or less. Yes, it's really that fast. And you'll be able to make sure that you don't get overpriced and ripped off by builders on your dream basement. So to go and get your free copy, all you have to do is click the link below and you'll be brought to a page of the Bespoke Home Design website. And you simply enter your name and email address and we'll email you your free copy. So click the link below and get yours now.